Whoa, hello. Super chat. Hey. Fab number one where we talked about Puss in Boots, Pin Ichio, and uh, the menu. Those were the three main things. Then we did first impressions for Dead Space. A little bit of Dead Space. Pinocchio. Pinocchio. By the time they hear this, they will likely have heard our full breakdown of Dead Space. That's oh, ISA. that's interesting to think about. I yeah. hope you guys enjoyed that. Yeah, I hope you had fun with it. Uh, the yeah. game and the video, I guess. Stream, what have you. Uh, so yeah, we're here to have a look at what people said. Say hello to them, I guess. This this first one says, Mola, can you read this super chat now? All right. Consider that say done. Never. I'd, n I will n I'd never read that super chat. Never. Well, see, the now well, part is just relevant to when I read it, right? Which was then, and so I've done it now. And since it's been read, I hope it was everything that you was wanted. Before. Yeah, but I can change that at a whim. Because I, I read it out. when. So the now is the now of now, not the now of then. I know, it's a lot to take I don't know. In. This all, I don't know, sounds a little fishy it's, to me. Uh, it's, it's the same sort of physics that uh, Christopher Nolan used in Interstellar. This is the kind of science fiction... Mumbo jumbo. Mumbo jumbo, topsy turvy, nothing matters anymore that I, I don't even know what to think of. The Omega Initiative is the Fallout Arbiter. Please bring him on when the Fallout series is aired. He's an Aussie fella, whatever that means. Uh, I don't even know what our plans are for covering Fallout series. TV well, I'm do. not that invested in Fallout, so yeah. I, but I, I, I'll probably watch it anyway, I just out neat. of curiosity. Yeah, I'm really, I'm really curious about what they're going to do with it. Um, I think I'm we're going to end up watching a bunch see. of these adaptations for video games. <laughs> I get the impression we're going to watch a whole bunch of them. See how um, they fare. Yeah. Fun fact, the stunt coordinator for Avatar 2 has a missing eye. Why? Because his ex-wife hired a hitman to kill him. He was shot four times and is still alive. So that's incredible. What a fucking wow. <laughs> crazy story. Wow. Jeez. Dude, imagine being that hitman. You'd be like, oh, you ruined my business. <laughs> like, how did you survive? What the fuck? How do you... I just... I can't... I just don't know. I imagine if I'm a hitman and I'm hired to kill a guy and I do so by shooting him in the head... Four one of your times. three, yeah. If I'm assuming three went into his body, one into his head, I don't know. I I just can't imagine just four into his head, and, Jesus. and then just not making sure. Yeah, there's like, double you know, tap, and then there's just like it. I guess I'll just sever your head to make sure. Uh, Fringy, defend a man of steel criticism from Rag. Uh, sorry, defend from. They didn't word this properly. Defend a man of steel criticism that comes from Rags. Oh, so like he criticizes it and then I try to defend it? Yeah, no matter. Um, okay, I'll give it a try. <laughs> all right. Well, uh, let me see. What what's a what's a man of steel criticism that I could that I could use? You have to go counter? for the uh, have to go for the Krypton had his chance. So yeah, I was I was weighing up either the laser baby or the um the like a massive collateral damage but you know let, let's go with the laser baby right <laughs> don't you think that it's extremely like don't you think it was a terrible thing for <laughs> superman to like just trying to state the question is kind of like amazing to think about that's that's was a, a thing, thing that happened film. superman the killed the film. baby <laughs> don't you think it's a little excessive and mean-spirited and kind of kind of jerkish behavior for superman to Take a laser beam to all of those <laughs> Kryptonian embryos on the ship. I don't even know what argument you would make. Actually, <laughs> I know like, what it is. And... What would you say? Well, just you have to go. The best thing you could do, I think, is to go with the film's argument, which is Krypton is Krypton it, had its it, chance. It's not even that. Is Krypton requires Earth's destruction in order to oh, right, begin yeah. anew, and so Superman had to destroy that ship. The the embryos the being destroyed is was. That... A, Unfortunate the circumstance, is, but the reality is that those embryos were only going to lead to more people like Zod, these limited, single operation uh, beings that in some ways it was unethical to farm them in the first place. They didn't suffer, they never lived. It was something that Superman decided to do for the sake of humanity. I d it's just all of the counter arguments <laughs> that one can make. 
<laughs> no, it's, it is insane. So I good. can't believe it's a thing. And when we were watching it again, I was just like, wow. <laughs> And to pair it with Krypton had his chance, as though he's saying, yeah, fuck the new Krypton that we could make from all these yeah. Kryptonians, I'm just gonna kill him. And I love that we had people saying, like, yeah, they were all people who would end up with one role, like farmer or engineer or soldier. So yeah, they're not really even people. It's like, you mean, like, Clark's parents? You're like, Jor-El? Like, what, we don't, they're not people? <laughs> like, what the fuck? Alright, what an absurd thing to say. If they're not people, Thanks, then why did, why did, uh, if they're not people, why did Clark get upset when he, he snapped Zod's neck? Why wouldn't he just be like, yeah, it's like I destroyed, like, a phone or a car, you know? It's not mm -hmm. like a person or anything. Maybe because when you're desperately trying to defend that shit, it, it's difficult. It, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, that movie sucks. Yes, it does. Okay. I wasn't expecting to start crying when Panic Attack Puss gets Retard Dog in the forest. That hit me hard and sudden. 8.5 out of 10 for me so far. Yeah, it's uh, it's really, really good. Undeniably. Excellent stuff. And I think they knew what they had when they were making it. I think so too. Fun. Uh, guess what wins Beck's Best Picture? I think Everything Ever All at Once or Top Gun Maverick. Top Gun ain't winning. It, it, it'll be... It, nah, no way. Everything I Ever All at Once so. seems like the thing I would expect. It ticks all of the and Oscars if, if boxes not, and it's a good film. Else. Yeah, that seems like a likely one. Um, I don't think Top Gun and Avatar, like, yeah, they got nominated, but I don't think there's any way that either of those films win. I'm surprised that Top Gun got nominated. Like, that's surprising to me. Well, there's a lot of really awesome filmmaking in it, right? Uh... Oh, yeah, sure. It's just that typically you don't see a movie like that get nominated for Best Picture. You don't typically see, like, a big-budget summer blockbuster action movie get nominated for Best Picture. Um, where's Jay been? I miss them. Jay has been working on a new video that you'll be seeing soon enough, or maybe you have seen it. Uh, I believe running a podcast with good old Metal Commander as well about Star Trek. I would expect... To uh, see coverage with Jay on something in the future, but a lot of these things, like, Jay doesn't know shit about Dead Space. Um, has he seen Puss in Boots? I don't know yet, actually. So. I might ask. I don't think he's seen Pinocchio. Um, obviously, it had nothing to do with Ragnarok. This is just on The Last of Us as well, right? Yeah, it's yeah just, a lot of topics uh, are just not in the, the old wheelhouse, but at some point, it's kind of like. eventually. Try and drag people in where suitable. Mm hmm. Gaming Magic 13 made a six hour video on how Toy Story 4 is bad. That seems reasonable. <laughs> I don't yeah. know. A lot you could talk about with that one. Seems sufficient, four hours. Morley, you must still add more less sus to YouTube chat. I want to do like a whole re revamp on all the emotes in uh, the YouTube chat or something. That's, more less uh... sus is the, the one where Peepo kind of is glaring, right? Yeah, but like a Morley version. I, I get. Um... <laughs> A lot of them, are <laughs> but I'd want to get like a, yeah. I guess, happy, sad, crying, and maybe another one for all three of us. Like, uh, yeah, that'd be good. Do, do, do. I saw this movie based on Fringy's recommendation and loved it. Thank you, Fringy. Yeah, no worries. I everybody will like this movie. I can't imagine somebody watching and going, "I didn't enjoy that. No that soul. was lame." I have no soul. It's just such a, it's such an easy film to like. Yeah. It's time to save Lord of the Rings and make new movies like Lord of the Rings, The Ring Awakens, The Last Wizard, and my favorite, The Rise of the Baggins. Abrams and Rain we trust. The or Rise Ryan, of maybe. the Baggins. Yeah, I think it's time. <laughs> right. Oh, they sound great. Let's make those movies, yeah. Lord Longbong of Mewbstrington Abbey. Any good chance of a Kong fap? Peter Jackson's Long Kong. When is less going on? Do movie fab for the ages. Yes, who are wags these creatures for the... Ah, hello. Oh, yeah, I think so. I think that's on the cards. Could happen. Yeah, very possible. Idea. Very possible. One day, maybe, here and there, definitely. Probably. Maybe. 100%. Who would you hire to write a Buffy Angel revival? Joss Whedon or nothing. Eh, that's it. <laughs> I wouldn't even want him to do it, to be honest with you. Buffy and Angel are fine. They can be left alone, but if you force them to be revived, I'd probably want him helming it. Though he's probably never going to work again. 
What about you guys? Hmm. Well, I guess Verizon. <laughs> yeah. Don't really have any. Uh, you know. Don't think I have any. Uh, saying this, I haven't. I haven't seen it yet, so I do not know. What? Sorry. What was the question? If uh, Buffy and Angel were to be revived, who would you have to revive it? We don't need to do that. But if you had to. I, don't, I, don't, I have no idea. I don't know. You'd want somebody who's willing to commit to several seasons of, uh, of a TV show. That's often a big ask. I imagine the spirit of the question is more so in who do you think can make it right, as opposed to, like, obviously in this hypothetical, they do donate however much time. I don't know. What does a Mike Flanagan Buffy reboot look like? Maybe, yeah. Like, with his production values, you know, as well as his character work, like, that could be really great. Yeah, could be. Um, DW should show Prince of Egypt in the logo montage. Uh, uh, well, but Prince of Egypt isn't like a big marketable IP. That's like the whole point of the, the logo introduction, it seems, is like, remember, remember, it's, it's member berries. Remember Toothless? Remember Poe and Shrek and Donkey? And I They're guess Boss Baby stuff. too. That's our stuff, yeah. And they even have the bad guys in there too. It's like, yeah, it's it's um which is more recent, so I guess that's I guess they presume that that did well when they were making it. Um it's just yeah, I don't know. It's uh see the thing is is like Disney still has it's like the CG castle now, but it's still the castle. Yeah. I'm just wondering like how long it is before we have like a montage that has like Ariel and and like um and like Woody and stuff like showing up. Or I guess Pixar would be the one that has, like, Woody, but, you know, Ariel, Simba, um, Belle, like, how how long before that's what the Disney montage is? Because, yeah, I think I've changed my mind. I prefer the old, uh, I prefer the old Marvel one, where it was just flipping through all the comic panels. Yeah. And now they waste a lot more of your time as well. Like, uh, because the DreamWorks one was, like, it used to only be, like, you know, 10 seconds. It was just the, 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 what's, what, it's a fishing rod, but what's the, is there a name for the, the like, the actual hook? Oh, well, yeah, I guess throw, the hook hits the water and pans across the logo. Now it's like, nah, it's not that. It's him riding around, flying through on the magical flying moon <laughs> to talk to all of the people. Really cool they just to waste see a lot more time. Because, like, the Marvel one's, like, 40 seconds long. Um, though I guess in their defense, they don't show anything else, it's just Marvel, they don't also do the Disney thing. And it's like, I guess it's nice that Lucasfilms is still, like, only four seconds. <laughs> that's, that's at least something, I guess. Behold my awesome milestone, behold! Been a member for 17 months. Oh, oh hey, geez. that is neat. I think, I don't know who has the record for, uh... I think it's either James Moore or Metal, but they're they're like past forty months. <laughs> I'm just as speaking in Spanish. All right. Wow, I I don't understand. I don't know. Hola, Spanish, senor. Or I know. Hola. Yeah. Hola, mi amigo. Do, uh, do you remember no that? Mola? La canasta. You remember that joke? Jack Black and Community. Yes, uh, I really loved it. Yeah, no, 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 I want to study with you guys. I thought it was, that, <laughs> no! that, was, that character's great because he's like, it's like, a, almost like um, a cursed Jack Black where, yeah, the thing about Jack Black is that he'll forever be able to mix in with people and have fun. That character, yeah. like he mixes in, has fun on the surface, but there's all these little cracks that show and eventually he like, like, ah, I ruined it! You're like, oh, okay, yeah. alright, what's that? <laughs> hey, what's going on? Yeah, about, I hate your study group, I hate it! <laughs> you all suck! And everybody's crying, like, Addie looks like she's holding back tears as he's being dragged off the table. <laughs> it's just, it's just funny, because it's just like, you guys can leave and I'll study it here. And it's like, well, that's unacceptable, so Joel's gonna grab him and drag him out. Joel, huh? Oh, uh, wait, J Joel? Oh my god, Jeff. <laughs> Yo, uh... Joel. Yeah. Um, but RLM mocked CG long shots, so they're bad, Kappa. This is the thing. It's, oh, a long uh -huh. shot achieves a lot more than simply... It, 
if you think there's nothing to praise about the way a shot is done in terms of whether or not it's long or whether or not it's cuts, it's like, because the only thing that changes is like the amount of effort in live action animation. There's no difference. I'd be like, damn. But well, it's it's like a, a huge mistake in terms of analysis. It, it's it's such a big mistake that I don't even know how you could make it. You um, still have someone like, who has to decide what we see in that one shot. Well, let's put it this way. I wouldn't be surprised if that opening shot for Star Wars, that was somebody's job for the... That was multiple people's job for, like, the entire production. And that it was many people's job for several months. Like, that wouldn't surprise me if that was the case. Well, yeah, it's... Because you got to... Remember, like, the, what people are suggesting is that the effort is no different than if it was being cut, cut, cut. What I'm trying to highlight is that there is still, categorically, it's a different process. To, because what the, we the reality see is, is you have to plan it out, because it's all digital. You need to, you need to yeah, plan still out your space. artwork involved, with composition, of course, all the kinds of planning, what we need to see, and what kind of tone you want it to set, what atmosphere it gives off. Well, and a big I, thing I, as well I think well a lot of people it, like it, that it, opening in Revenge of the Sith, right? I love it. I think it's really great. I, uh, I think it's really cool. And it's, it, I, I guess it's like, it's almost you need to run people. So what is cool about a one take in like Children of Men? What's so cool about that? It's like, man, the amount of coordination that would have been required to pull mm -hmm. this off is like incredible. And the amount of trickery that had to go into like mounting the camera in the car, having it be able to move around, the smooth transition of taking it out of the car, uh, like at the end seamlessly, like all of these sort of efforts are the things that are really cool about it. Um... Like, it, it is the precision with which you have to achieve something in real time. That's really... And, and, of, and of course, like, you know, whatever you're achieving narratively as well, like getting people absorbed in the moment and stuff like that. And then I guess the logic would be like, well, you like, if it's CGI or if it's animation, like, that's not... Like, that isn't something that you have to execute in real time. It's like, no, but it is something that you have to execute with an insane amount of planning and coordination between people. It's like, well, what do you mean? It's like, well... Typically, people have a couple of shots that they work on, you know, like a shot will only last, you know, like five, ten seconds, maybe. <clears throat> Instead of just having those be in separate cuts, you need to find ways and plan ways to have all of that be seamless. You need to make it so that people can't tell that multiple people worked on this one shot, that they worked on their own portion of the shot that smoothly transitioned into another portion of the shot. That takes a lot of planning and effort ahead of time. Uh, mapping out the space to make sure that it all makes sense because you can't do any trickery. You need to have a space that is, like, logical for characters to move through. Like, it's all of these sorts of efforts that are required. And then there's the fact that you have to animate it. Like, I mean, why isn't that worth anything? You need to create all of these assets. You need to animate all of these assets. You need to keep track of several moving parts as you animate it, you know, like, frame by frame, one, you know, one day at a time. There's a shit ton of work that goes into doing a one take in animation, obviously. And I would go you as know? far as saying that. Think of the Revenge of the Sith. We open instead of having those two ships on their own passing over a like a Republic ship, I think, and then we move into the yeah. huge war. It's like if it was cut close up with uh, Anakin just like you know focusing on the window, cut back, and it's them two moving, cut. Maybe a POV shot from one of the clone troopers inside the Republic ship, seeing them go over. And then another cut shot, and they're just in the action already. Because it's kind of yeah, it, it, it's just like it's just a completely different thing. It um, is a the one shot the creates a is, different thing. Well, yeah, because it just you know it smoothly transitions out of the uh, the the title crawl, like you know talking about the state of affairs, the standard Star Wars thing, hands down as often as the case into space, you know, and then uh, yeah, you got like your two little ships, but it's over Coruscant, and then as they're flying through. You have them flying next to the ship, and then when they cut down, there's the big reveal of the epic space battle. Like, there's a certain tone that gets evoked from that that's really cool that would have been different if you were doing it in a uh, in multiple takes. You don't get that of, like, the big sweeping you shot, even, zoom um, in, get a little bit closer to their ship, and then the big reveal of the battle. If I was feeling particularly generous, I'd be like, this is coming to the end of the Clone Wars. Those two have fought together the whole time. They're moving into yes. this final battle, and this film is going to tear them apart. Those two. Yep. You know. Well, it's just. I yeah. wish the prequels and, were and great, also, okay? Because like, there's so much potential. Yeah. Uh, also, also, there's just the matter of like, I don't know that you can do the same music choice and have it be as effective without the one take, of like the, you know what I mean? Like, um, if if it's very synced to what's happening in this one take. It's yeah. like a big 40 second long like show musical showcase as well as a visual showcase. And it's like, yeah, I don't know what it looks like if it's not a one take. 
Um, the men you would have you believe that eight months after sexually harassing one of his employees, he asked her to help him kill people, and she responds by demanding that they all kill themselves as well. That's the thing about that. Uh, his entire crew agree to kill themselves. It's like, eh. it's just really absurd. It's an absurd world. You have to assume because, like, that's like, yeah, ridiculous. but it's a horror comedy. It's like, guys, uh, come on. Don't, nah, <laughs> I don't think that's a satisfactory answer. Uh, Puss in Boots two panic attacks greater than Iron Man three. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> I've said it before. We'll say it again. Iron Man three made fun of him for it. Yep. Just like Endgame made fun of Thor for being depressed. And you'll find a lot of people will still say, like, well, no, they address it. And it's just like, they made fun of it. Putting it in there they is not enough. Fun of it. And then you just got over it like it was nothing because it wasn't addressed. Well, yeah, and then you see remnants of it in Civil War. Mm hmm. I feel like well, they took it much to more seriously. Trying to recover it, yeah. yeah. Trying to recover. Uh, Wings Quote of the Day. My left yes. leg's about to fall off. Oh no. That's not uh, good. Oh no, that no. I'm not happy. Jeez. I don't want him to ever stop. I want him to keep on going. I don't I certainly don't want him to lose a leg. Jeez. Legs are really cool. So yeah. Uh you you'd think that like that would be the thing that would prompt you to change like your habits, right? And like, then there are a lot of people unfortunately in the world like... who lose a foot to like diabetes and the Oh man, but like feet, dude. <laughs> like this, you need yeah. those. You need them. Oh. Go to Trungo's chickpea grumbo. You remember that <laughs> losing our shit yeah, for I ages? Do Trungo. Trungo. I do remember Trungo's chickpea grumbo. <laughs> chickpea grumbo at Trungo's, <laughs> and then they got loads of positive reviews. All those reviews. <laughs> That video cracked me the fuck up. <laughs> it was hilarious, all these bizarre, weird reviews that they got. <laughs> you just know, being the, like, the guys who organize all that, like, what is this? <laughs> like, well, life is funny. That's all I can say about that. Uh, look, is Luxor Junior the lamp from Brave Little Toaster? No, he's the lamp from Luxor Junior. I haven't seen Brave Little Toaster in ages. Is the, uh, does the lamp look really similar, or...? I haven't seen that, so I, I don't know. Fair enough. Um, hello, chat people and EFAP. The Dell fruit of the week is the Mimo Mimo fruit. Allows the user to turn people's memories into strips of film and manipulate them. Would you eat this fruit? To not be able to swim, no. And, and it was... Uh, what, what power does it give you? Or, so you? Sorry? Presumably I could take your memories that you're having at the time, Rags, and turn them into film and manipulate them, it says. Take other people's memories, turn them into, like, movies or films. Film strips, I assume, and then that could be viewed. And then, like, something that could be, like, the memory store. Um, and then manipulate them. Um, I feel like my I brain's suppose... worrying me about ethical stuff. Like, it's going to have huge consequences, right, for, like... Uh, of course it has to. Yeah. Uh, no, like, no it's way. Like, I... But like it's saying, like I could if I wanted to, but why? W I'm trying to think of to but make to a... lose the ability to swim, right? Yeah, That's but I never like swim. Off. I don't think I'd want to. I nah, I'd still want to be able to swim just in case. I think I would. <laughs> I think I'd stick to having the swimming power, because <laughs> power, yeah. uh, just because I don't have to deal with all of the ethical horrors of being able to take people's memories and turn them into film. Well, mm -hmm. you could do this if someone was like, hey, you know, I, I, um, like I, my graduation or my, you know, my wedding or something for my kids or something like that. You turn that into a film, right? Like, yeah. yeah, sure. And then you just turn it into a film and then you can enjoy like, it forever. You're just using it to win arguments. That's what happened. No, that's what happened. Bitch, I'm going to fucking take well, you back. So I was thinking yeah, about you... how people could have memories of things that aren't the way they happened, though. And then. The courts could eventually rule, it's like, yes, but if the memory is traumatic enough, we know that they feel that, and so whatever you did made them feel that, and so that might be worthwhile enough to punish you, and you'd be like, oh god. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Sounds like Invincible is getting its season 2 in late 2023. Hope this means EFAB can watch season 1 now. Also, sucks to be a Rick and Morty at this point. Um, don't 
expect us to really watch it. Um, uh, I was actually going to say it depends on how everyone reacts to season two that may, may encourage me to watch season one and two. Mm. But everyone can let uh, me know. Yeah, I guess Rick and Morty is uh, changing forever, though. Yeah. We obviously, but I mean, uh, I don't care about Rick and Morty anymore, so, you know. Me and, me and Fringy famously jumped ship from Rick and Morty about a year before it, this happened. Yeah. So, uh, it doesn't affect us in any way, really, but, like, they're going to try and probably move on, <laughs> you know, as best they can. It's oh, a I very profitable IP, so. Well, it's, it's just, just more so that they're already locked in for several seasons. They have to the... keep going. Problem Rick and Morty face is that there's so much work that's been done that connects Royland to like oh geez and uh, Rick like those things are just his. So it's like really hard to detach them uh, entirely. People like everyone making fun of Justin Royland, they they'll use those voices or those references. Rick and Morty voices because they're they're more yeah like they're as much just detached to him as they are to the show. It's kind of like this hard thing to move past. As I, uh, yeah, it it seems like that show's just gonna have difficulty sort of moving past everything that's involving like that situation. And you know, like, are they gonna acknowledge it in universe? Do you think that's the kind of show that would do it? Uh, or would they though? I don't know. Like, or I, mm. I don't know. I don't know if they would no. actually. I yeah, like that seems like it could be. You'd be. You'd have to be. There'd be so many landmines if you were trying to make a reference there. It's like, oh yeah, the voice changed. Why? Oh well, <sighs> you know, like as soon as you start, yeah, like that's, yeah. I'm not sure. Why we sound I think... different. Ah, uh, why did he, why did he punch that bitch? Uh... I don't know what. Uh, I'm not sure what that. I imagine that they would steer clear of like. referencing it. Well, I mean, yeah, yeah, like. I I certainly wouldn't want to if I were making that show. I wouldn't no either. Way. I would just carry on as if nothing had happened. And I guess, yeah, different voices, that has to be the thing. But a bunch of different voices too, because he voiced a lot of characters on that show. Yeah. But as, for, as for how involved he was at the writing, like, who knows? He He did, like, multiple shows. I imagine he was barely involved. Kind of happened seemingly with shows as they... Seems like kind of South Park is one of those exceptions where Trey Parker and Matt Stone are like intimately involved with that show like 25, 26 years later. They're still in the writer's it's room. They're still honestly. Trey Parker writes every episode. Yeah, well, and they're still guaranteed, I think, for another like four seasons and I think several specials. It seems like they'll just keep making South Park. They're not Park broken records at this life. point in some way. Um, well, no, The Simpsons is always ahead, right? Uh, The Simpsons is always one step ahead. But they surely have broken They've... records in terms of their contributions are consistent over these many, many um, years. I, don't, I guess, I don't know how many people keep track of that, but I mean, it, it might be right, because I'm pretty sure that for the last 20 years, like, every single episode has been written by Trey Parker. There is a team that helps him, but, like, Trey Parker writes every single episode of, of South yeah. Park. Um... And well, both writes and directs every single episode. Yeah, I just pulled up on Wikipedia and you scroll, it's just Trey Parker, Trey Parker, Trey Parker, Trey Parker. You have to go all the way back to season six to find another name in the writer uh, director uh, category. I know you stopped watching <laughs> just... it, but you should check a clip on Twitter where Velma gets hit by a car. <laughs> no, nice. but no, it's right. probably not going to be nearly as funny as Ruby Rose getting hit by that truck. Oh, and Batwoman. Uh, oh my god. The funny thing is, like, because you, especially because you said Ruby Rose, Rags is referring specifically to the episode, the hilarious, Batwoman. like, bad CGI, not the actual, like, damage Ruby Rose yeah. sustained on set or anything from whatever yeah. accident happened. Um, Because that shit was fucking hilarious. She just, like, flies away, but she's totally fine. Uh, she was in what? Like, a biker outfit. That was it. She was on a bike, and she got hit, and then she just went tumbling, CGI, Ruby Rose, tumbling. And it's like, she was fine, even though her leg would have been crushed by the, the van. And also, just the impact of getting sent, like, 15, 20 meters. <laughs> or maybe 15, She's 20 feet through the air, landing on the ground, yeah. Dun, and dun, of course, dun, just dun, the, dun, the dun, force dun. as well being exerted on you to go from going in one direction to sharply going in another direction. Yeah. It and was so bad. the timing that would be required for that. Yeah, yeah, it's just absurd. Nuts. If 343 doesn't nail Halo Infinite, it's over. They're screwed. Fringo Baggins, 2021. 
Oh, did I say that? Apparently. Yeah, I mean, yes, because this was That's their third crazy. chance. And yeah, now it looks like um, the, the recent developments are they might be switching to Unreal Engine um, for the next thing that they're working on. Um, as for more campaign stuff, like ever, that seems to be very iffy at the moment. It seems like the the focus may be shifting to multiplayer, and apparently in terms of, like, loss of employees at 343, it's, like, substantial, nearly 100. I'm not sure how much of that is, like, absolutely concrete, but these are sort of the things that are floating around, and more leadership is left or being moved to different parts of Microsoft. Um, yeah, I it's not looking good uh, for that, that franchise. Like, it looks like it might actually be in serious trouble. I just want to thank you guys for validating my love of writing. You all deserve it, and because I'm not insensitive to other people's feelings, I'm only uh, not only saying hi to Rags, but to everyone else too. Also, hi Rags. Oh wow! Ah, hello. Hello. Oh. Afternoon massives. Have any of you watched Danger Five? And if so, what are your thoughts? And also, have Roanoke Gaming on? He's a microbiologist YouTuber. I have not seen that movie. No idea what Danger Five is. If you look closely during the crowd watching Puss fighting the giant, you might Blue. see a hot Brazilian wolf watching from the shadows as he later stares. Dates? Like... Yeah, everybody was very mad at me for not getting that up faster. I get it. I know. <laughs> I know. Yeah. When people talk to themselves, it tends to be partial thoughts, while dialogue in stories is far more complete than even normal conversations IRL. Interesting thought. Maybe that that's part of well, the key is, to make it, it sound more natural. Be, uh... Yeah, it's a tricky part of writing dialogue. You don't want to do what often happens where there's lots of ums and ahs and just sort of like thoughts that don't lead anywhere or not very articulate. That's not what they're saying. But, but, they're talking about talking to yourself, right? We, we were talking about what, what oh, cracks talking to yourself because a lot of the time it oh, yeah, I guess, yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, because part of the suggestion like, is that yeah. it's incomplete, which I think is a pretty good one, actually. That's a good one. Um, often because, you know, you're talking to yourself, but you also have your brain kind of running at the same time. Yeah. And while you're talking to yourself, your brain might complete the thought for you, so there's no need to finish your thought. Yeah, it's it's going to be different to, again, what you see in, like, video games, like in Horizon. Gotta do this, now to do that. It's like, uh, okay. <laughs> sure, yep. Yeah. Perito is a Paragon character done right. Who? Tri the doggo. Perito? Yes. yes. Uh, a Paragon? Well, a Paragon character? Uh, yeah, I suppose so. It depends on what kind you're talking about. But yeah, yeah, I think so. It was to slot into an archetype of a selection of, uh, is it nine that Paragon's a part of? These D&D &D references, I can't remember when you try and, like, get them into this sort of thing. Or is it more no, of a it's not reference? In the... I think it's a Paragon broader reference a... to someone who's just generally, um, you know, concerned about other people's well-being... And... Well, yeah, you have that in uh, Mass Effect, Paragon and Renegade. And that's the, yeah, the binary. Paragon, I guess Paragon gets used in loads of different ways, yeah. Because I was thinking about Paragon yeah. and Rogue and maybe uh, Bard. Where does Bard come from, then? Is that D&D? Bard is a class, yeah, in, like D&D &D and stuff. But, I mean, I guess you've also just got Bard as, like, a thing <laughs> that you can be. Yeah, yeah. Because, uh, obviously, they're talking about archetypes and stuff, and it's like, yeah, Paragon... Is typically super morally righteous, right? And brave slash yeah. rageous, or I don't know. Perito would definitely is a particular kind, like Rags was saying. Uh, Rags, Yu Gi Oh has a unified card and monsters designs. They are called those are called archetypes. Check out older ones like Gravekeepers, Light Swarm, and Elemental Heroes. Whatever I was saying related to Yu Gi Oh stuff. Uh huh. But. I mean, fair enough, I guess. <laughs> mm -hmm. Both my kids, five and nine, loved Puss in Boots too. My daughter, five, asked why death couldn't die, and I told her, well, he's death. He never dies. Thought it was funny. She even thought to ask the question. Yeah, I mean, I could see myself asking that. Why has death got the powers? <laughs> and besides, there are, you know, different fictions where you can kill death. It's a little confusing. I think they kill death in Supernatural. The horseman. Uh -huh. I guess play as death in Darksiders 2? Yeah, Darksiders 2, you play as death. Lots of deaths. He's probably one of the most adapted characters, right? 
death is cool i like the the personification of death as like a concept guy yeah, is just bob okay have any of you seen an animated movie called nine if so what are your thoughts on it i enjoyed it when i watched it a while ago i have not seen it but i know the movie you're talking about i, think I know Elijah the poster, Wood is the voice of the, yeah seen. i've never seen that movie no little, like sack people or something yeah, like so. little yeah, mad scientist makes little people after the apocalypse or something. I classify Puss in Boots as a family movie. Something that challenges kids is something adults can enjoy or relate to as well. I think it works for a whole family, sure. Yeah, I think uh, so. I imagine it's what they're aiming to do, right? That's like the biggest moneymaker a movie that can be enjoyed by a lot of people. EFAP reviews Puss in Boots 2. Dreams do come true. I think a lot of people wanted us to, to check out uh, Last Wish, and so we have. Uh, yeah. The wolf is basically DreamWorks' pyramid head, and the more you dive into the story, characters and forests changing based on the person's past, the parallels to Silent Hill 2 are interesting. I mean, for all we know... They were in, the person who helped write the story was inspired by liking something like Silent Hill. Adapt things up and down in terms of age rating. Stories, right? They're universal. In a new industry, would you work in a small, medium, then large company to end with a great income, or go large, medium, small to get more ownership of a company? Large, medium... All right. I'm I'm trying to like understand the question. Large, medium, small of a company. I think well. So the what? fundamental question seems to be: Would you prefer a bigger income or more more ownership? Um, it depends. If the ownership translates into having more like creative, yeah, the like more in more control, but having more ownership. Yeah. I guess because it's, it's smaller that you have more ownership, but less. Income and then what is larger being that you have a big smaller piece of the pie, but it's a big pie. Probably depends on the business. If it was a business like I own stock or I uh, or, or I, uh, I had some position in the company, but it was a company that did a thing that I didn't care about and I wouldn't wouldn't want to be involved in, then I'd just give me the money. You know, if I'm not going to use it or create anything with it, then just give me the money. Um, but if it was something smaller that I was really invested in and it was making things that I really cared about, then yeah, I'd imagine I'd rather have, you know, control um, over, you know, the processes in it. Even if it was a smaller company that ultimately may like less money and stuff. Yeah, I, I need to know more. I could see myself choosing both depending on the circumstance. I'm not sure either. I think I need, yeah, I need more than that. Hail Fringy the Cricket. <laughs> Fringy's many animals. My friend told me that caring about the story of movies was stupid and I should read a book instead. What? Like you shouldn't care about book stories, not movie stories? Okay. <laughs> Apparently movies still have some work to do before they take it seriously as well. It was me thinking yeah. that games and animation were the ones that had the big uh, hills to climb. No, nah, even movies still kind of have that, yeah. Fun point of irony, Jack Horner's approach to having all these relics is basically Hollywood's approach to having all these iconic IPs. Yeah, kind of. Like, how can they benefit me and, like, so little understanding of what they mean to people or what they're for? Good Puss in Boots was good from other people, and I was planning on seeing it, but now that you Dumbos like it, I have to see it. Also, you have to play DDLC. Hmm. I have to. Interesting. You enjoyed the Puss in Boots. Uh, not sure if you all noticed, in The Last of Us Episode 1, Joel puts Sarah in bed while she is still wearing her shoes. Really? <laughs> I guess because um, she fell asleep, well, right? If she fell, yeah, if she fell asleep and you just took her and put her on the bed, then yeah, that makes sense to me. I suppose some people would be like, you should take her shoes off. I'm like, I just, doesn't really matter, I suppose. I can't sleep with shoes. I mean, it's very difficult for me to sleep with, like, wearing shoes and stuff around my feet um, myself. But if, you, if you're 
you're asleep, then just dump them on the bed. Move on. Panic attack being shown well are problematic. Lol, I can barely hear you over the sound of those goalposts being shifted. I think this is when I was talking about the weird like, Twitter stuff. Good responses like um, like I told you, one of the ones it went viral as well. It was one of those being like, I don't want panic attacks to be seen as normal. They're not normal. It's like, um, uh, uh. <laughs> yeah, you know. It's, uh. Uh, the biggest compliment I can give Puss in Boots is that every second is just oozing with care and talent. It's nice to see a kid's movie with that much care. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it is. Um, the menu felt like Midsummer, but even dumber. Every character was one-dimensional and awful, and no one tried to actually escape. This is the thing. The characters function, I think, excellently subtextually, but I don't think they really work as people, because mostly too cartoonish. They, they're serving yeah, a such bit. a point that they're not allowed to be normal people, which is what I think the mistake of the movie was. I think you can easily maintain all that subtext while actually having real characters. Um, you know, like Nicholas Holt knowing everyone was going to die. I would probably tweak it to be like he was essentially given the clues that something horrible was going to happen, but that he's so obsessed. He was just like, wouldn't like this is the best thing ever to have happened in my life. It doesn't matter what it's about. Um, but not like explicitly saying everyone will die. You should come. But he's like, yeah, okay. It's just like, uh huh. Nice. Death says, "Why the hell did I play with my food at the end?" Yeah, probably would have been worth to find out what. Cause I oh, know. <laughs> that's interesting. Yeah, that's interesting that he would say that because it's it's because yeah, like the big point that he makes is. This has been ruined because what I wanted no longer exists. And I guess he would be like, well, yeah, if I had seized my chance earlier. But at the same time, right, he, he's gained some level of respect for Puss. Yeah. For discovering that sort of inner, un unshakable um, uh, courage. Is the cat blade done better than the hot sauce? You know the answer to that. In <laughs> yeah, the of course weapon, it is because it's, it's it's appropriate character and it's good thematically because it's about it's about being with a, like you know one of the most important things for Puss was realizing that his legend has room for other people in it. Yeah, and what better way to emphasize that than the blade saving his life being something that he got from somebody else that somebody who matters to him. That's good shit. You found movies Brave Little Toaster scared me as a kid. Yeah, maybe we do Brave Little Toaster and Return to Oz to get scary kids' films that shouldn't be allowed to be shown. Maybe. Are you maybe. fucking kidding me? Avatar 2 for Best Picture? Yep. I st I'm not surprised by that at all. I, that makes complete sense to me that would end up there. Is Avatar like 2 it, not an animated movie? There is live action stuff, like strictly live action stuff in Avatar 2. It's not all animated. However, I think it's true that there's not a single frame that doesn't have post it in it. Um, though I'd imagine that's similar for a lot of movies these days, especially fucking... Uh, episode 143, I'm coming for you, Massives. Also, Heil around. <laughs> Heil! My favorite part of Avatar 2 is when Jake's Lee fused with the whale, rolled a, ro rode a will pool up and said, I now have become the Avatar 2, the way of the war. That was a pretty cool And part. then he avatared... You can't say <laughs> that anymore. Sounds like some, I, yeah, I was about to say, someone who really, really likes that movie. Yeah, that's the nickname they got given is Avatars. Kind of funny. Good for them. Some of the fastest stop motion recordings is a second a day. That's how long it takes at their best. It's literally done frame by yeah. frame. Yep, it takes a long time. But I guess the thing that can help is that you can have multiple shots being worked on concurrently. Like you have, you know, one team that's working on one scene, one team working on another one. But yeah, I mean, uh, I'm pretty sure Curse of the Were Rabbit, it took 16 months to just shoot it all. That's not they including do... creating all the props and everything. They do all the voices then before they do the uh, Animation will... will... It, 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 I think it can vary. Like sometimes animation, a lot, most of the time, the voice work is done before the animation. Um, but sometimes it could be like the voice work is done when they're blocking out a scene, right? So they could be blocking out and then they'll get like voice actors to sort of deliver the performance in line with something that's already blocked out. Yeah, like you, the, the, the reason why you do that is because it's generally 
it's generally better to do the timing of the voicing uh, when you have the voice work rather than doing it before and then telling the actor, now you need to do it exactly like we've yeah. animated it, you know? So yeah, generally voice work comes before animation. It's like one of the earlier parts of a project. Fun stop mo fact. The 30 or so second scene in Paranorman where the zombies come out of the ground took a full year to animate. Oh. You should see yeah, Paranorman then. That... Well, because we've, uh, we've seen Coral... I, I have finally seen Coraline now. And that is a oh. really great movie. Oh. It's really good. I like it a lot. It's uh as I said before, I find it was... incredibly cozy, despite the fact it's pretty dark. It is a very cozy film. It's a very unique film as well. It's got a really great sort of vibe. Um and it's a really great looking film in terms of the, the stop motion animation. Like the character designs are really great. Uh all of the animation is super smooth. There's a lot of cool imagery. The backgrounds and the props are super detailed. And uh conceptually it's a cool movie. Yeah, I would give high recommendation, but I pretty much have, I don't know if there's any stop motion movies I've watched that I go, oh, that's not good. It's kind of interesting, right? It, because there's so few big stop motion animated films, it, it almost see. It, I kind of feel the same way about, um, like, if you were to, if you were to take, like, all theatrical animated films and then rank good and bad, it's like, man, there's, like, a pretty good ratio there of, like, good films, or at the very least, like, decent films, right? Yeah. Like it's 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 um if you compare by comparison to like superhero films as a ratio like <laughs> like uh, yeah. theatrical animated films there's like a very high it's it's a more consistent bar and it feels like with stop motion if you were to run through the list again like basically every Ardman film is really cool um Coraline was a really good movie I hear good things about the other films that that studio made as well like Kubo and Two Strings oh that, um, yeah that movie's awesome. It's just that um, it seems like one of the big things that stop motion always has going for it is that there is always a tremendous amount of respect that those films instantly earn from just the medium that they are. Um, that there's so much love and attention to detail and care poured into every single frame just by virtue of like how you create something like that. And yeah, I mean, Pinocchio slots in well into that category. That mo that movie maybe is like incredibly Maybe it encourages detailed. people to really take care of the storytelling when they, you know how long this will take. Like, yeah, like oh, you, one you're shot committing with to a this, big so project. Make it a good shot. Yeah. And maybe maybe it even might just be the sense that even though everything that you're doing is awesome, like in terms of a craft, there's 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 sort of an uphill battle, it seems to be, with people and with animation for some reason. It's almost like it encourages you to create something that's really great. Like not only do you need to breathe life into these characters through the animation, but you feel compelled to inject even more in through the writing, maybe. Because I don't know, how do you explain it that, like, stop-motion animated films, like, consistently are pretty good? Um, or, or, you know, often great. Like, yeah. several of them are great films. Because, again, Chicken Run, Curse the Were-Rabbit, um, Coraline, Pinocchio, uh, Nightmare Before Christmas. These are all great films. Um, have you seen the stop motion Mad God by Phil Tippett and the many other wonderful workers? If so, opinions? You need to see. We have not I seen haven't. it yet. We still have to see that. Treasure Planet has God Deer 2D and 3D animation. Well, yeah, they used uh, Deep Canvas to have 2D, 3D backgrounds that they'd have 2D characters drawn on to like have the movement. Tarzan did it, and Tarzan had some really cool shots as well, like when he's swinging through the trees, that was really cool. But it was a technique that we only got to see used a couple of times because they, yeah, they, they stopped making 2D animated films there. And then they they went back with Princess and the Frog, and I think they did a Winnie the Pooh theatrical film, and then that was it, and now it's just 3D, which is fine, like, that's cool, I like 3D animated films. I just wish that there was 2D animated films as well. I, I like them a lot. Uh, Pinocchio's design is based on a 2002 illustrated version of the book by Gris Grimley, who also an executive producer for the film. The illustrations are incredible. Oh, yeah. That's cool. Okay, interesting. But I really like the look of Pinocchio in this. Same here. Too. Hi guys, hi Rags. Hello. Ever heard of... Oh, this is awkward. Before the recent news. Uh... 
Ever heard of Shafrilis Productions, one of my top favorite movie reviewers along with you guys. He has a different take on Toy Story 4, though. Ever thought of having him on to talk? Would happily talk to pretty much uh, anyone the good old space of happily reviewing things with good old faith and stuff. Um, though I think right now he's um, recovering from a very horrific accident. Yeah. It's so tragic. I can't even imagine... Yeah, I, I honestly I have no idea what the details are in terms of what happened. Um, all I know is the results, and yeah. But yes, as I understand it, he is now out of hospital and recovering. But his brother and good friend of his, it's uh, it's just it's really really sad. Yeah. So yeah, wish him a speedy recovery, and hopefully he's got a network there that can help support him emotionally as well. Because yeah, like I I can't even imagine. Same. Uh, hey guys, since we're on Animated Film Day, you have my vote to rewatch or break down How to Train Your Dragon sometime. It's DreamWorks' best, I, in my honest opinion. It's a really good movie. Coverage of that someday. Maybe we maybe. could do a DreamWorks. <laughs> Is there a DreamWorks arc on the cards? I feel like that would be a lot of films. We, we'd be able to plan it out. I think we'd have to hit all the major ones, right? Obviously, Shrek, Shrek. Uh, I'm happy to skip Shrek 3. Um, well, but. Well. I don't know if we should skip them just because we think they're bad. That's almost a reason to keep them in, right? To right, it might be it worthwhile falls. to compare. Yeah, maybe. Well, maybe it would be more so that if we ever did, it's not a DreamWorks arc, it would just be specific series arcs. So maybe a Shrek arc and a Kung Fu Panda arc and a How to Train Your Dragon arc. That could be interesting. I'd, I I think I'd be, though I, I will say, I'd, I'd be very up for like a old school Pixar arc. Like that feels like that could be a really great adventure. I'm just basically running maybe from Toy Story all the way through Toy Story 3. That seems like an appropriate place to to get to. I suppose we've done Toy Story 4, haven't we? So Yeah, yeah we don't need to do that. I'm not as interested in um basically Pixar's output over the last like, you know, 10, 11, 12 years. Um it's very much basically up until Toy Story 3, though for me it's mainly up until Wally. That's like yeah, man. What like if you were to look at a studio making films and it's like Man, what studio had, like, the best run? It's like, I don't know, man, Pixar, like, making great films consistently for 13 years? <laughs> like, that's, that is, uh, that's really impressive. Uh, that's not even including all of the short films that they made beforehand that were really cool. Um, I personally prefer the original version of Pinocchio, Geppetto, where they are more nice and understanding instead of the mean and brat they are now. I mean, it, uh, I haven't seen, I guess I talk about the original film, um, but I haven't seen like many wow. interpretations of Pinocchio, so I don't know if hey, that's, that's more the common. one, really. And it's also been a long time since I've seen like Pinocchio, the uh, Disney one back in the day. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, and of course there's but, the wait, was new what, version. Sorry, what was the question? Well, the question was they basically prefer saying them being like... nice and understanding to each other instead of bratish. I. Like, the the problem is, again, I haven't seen Pinocchio in a long time, but I am totally happy with the dynamic that they chose to explore here of them not getting along so well initially. Yeah, I'm fine with that. Uh, well, a big fan of your Outlast series. I've watched it three times and not bored. Oh, Ooh, incredible. Not even bored. Yeah. Um. Funny enough, I always like to mention it as a tidbit, but I tried to... I drew out how the maps worked in that game. Then I took it into like Photoshop and made really crude, sort of better versions of the drawings I had. And then I was just like, fuck me, I can't do art. And uh, Fortier was around and I was like, can you make these look good? He was like, yes. <laughs> I was like, okay, do it. And they, they're the what I end up showing in the video. Uh, sort of, it's to, it's to help explain why I think the design in Outlast is so pathetic. But maybe that's a bit harsh. I don't know. I was just, I was just very upset that that game got all of the appraise and attention for essentially jumping on the amnesia train and amnesia was so much more deliberate and careful in how it was designed but hey when you get a big old fleshy bloody spooky monster grabbing you and going blah, 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 that's uh, makes for really good let's play compilations you guys remember just as well as i do that was that was on top of youtube once upon a time uh what let's plays yeah, well, especially horror let's plays last, uh, compilations yeah, people I'm screaming sure. and being scared by stuff Oh yeah, I remember that. That was like 2012, 2013. That was like the big days of that. Yeah, it's crazy. Um, Man. Yeah. Friends, you know? Yep. Remember when Del Toro was going to direct The Hobbit? 
Would have been really cool to see what that would look like. Mm -hmm. That would have been very interesting, yeah. Does Peter Jackson, like, is he planning on making anything? Or is he just, like, done? I don't know. I mean, he produced all engines, <laughs> so... Great film from what I... Yeah. Hey, Mola, I've heard you say your favorite metal subgenre is symphonic metal. Have you ever listened to Avantasia? Uh, oh, that's only going to be funny to me, isn't it? I don't yeah, know if you guys ever remember what I end up saying whenever people ask me for my favorite bands or not. Avantage oh, is one I always mention. One, right? yeah. It sounds like the Scarecrow well, yeah. and Ravenchild might be right up your alley. If they had a capper on this, I'd believe it. <laughs> um, yeah, Scarecrow is amazing, and Ravenchild is actually something I've been listening to on a bit of a repeat lately. I, I, one of the, it's actually part, I showed part of that song to you, Fringy. Um, oh yeah, yeah, that was really cool. It's an interesting little subgenre. Um, symphonic yeah. and power metal. They are loves them. But yes, I have heard have of been... Avantasia. They are, I think, my second favorite to Rhapsody, but it can fluctuate. And Power Wolf is right. What now, uh, well. what is your favorite? What are you listening to right now, Rags? Not like right, right now, but lately. Oh, I haven't been listening to. Uh, I have not been listening to a lot of music lately. I've been watching, uh, watching, listening to like YouTube videos and stuff. If I'm right. playing something or just laying around, I'll be listening to those. I just haven't been listening to a lot of music lately, honestly. Just not in a, not in that sort of mindset at the moment. Okay, yeah. I think for me, I'm always in the mindset to listen to music. I, uh, I. I don't. I I always want to have something I can listen to. It's mainly I'm still on my synth wave uh, sort of uh, phase at the moment. I've just been listening to a ton of a ton of synth music. Easy on the ears. Uh, here's two more doubloons, yoinky splinky. Thanks, EFAP, for still being sane. I have the same feelings as Mauler. Pinocchio is really good, but I don't see it as a flawless masterpiece uh, most people see. Oh, yeah, I mean, it's not flawless, no. I can understand why people would praise it to high heaven, though. It's uh, it's just a fucking, for lack of a better term, work of art. That yes, yes. Folks a lot of things in people. Rags, you seen Crobcat's Halo video yet? Also, hi. I have brought a tear to my <laughs> eye. <dude. laughs> yeah, it's, uh, yeah. Something that really awakens those very, very fond memories of playing all those games and hanging out at friends' houses. And that was, uh, that was something special. I hope that's not a thing that goes away in gaming, you know, the split screen and. Oh, I'm glad, and if it does go away, I'm very, very glad that I got to experience it. There's nothing like it. Halo was like the perfect game for it. The campaign, the multiplayer. There are individual games to this day that I remember us playing and just having a great time. Um, Hail and long live the long man. Also, hi, Rex. Hello. Hi, Mola. I'm currently playing Dead Space Remake. I'm going for a Plasma Cutter run. So far, pretty good. Well, uh, myself, Metal, uh, James mentioned it. I think a couple people have been trying that, and it's um, it's kind of interesting how the, the idea with that is that it's a challenge. Like, can you survive the whole game without using weapons that are more, you know, suited to certain events? But the fact is, the Plasma Cutter is just so fucking good. That it, plasma Cutter is incredibly versatile. It makes me think that, like, if there were no other weapons at all, um, I don't think I would hate this game at all. I'd be like, it's fucking great. And I think I could see myself being like, yeah, it would be cool if they had more weapons, I think. I, I think I'd be saying The that. variety is welcome, because my yeah. run is obviously with a bunch of different weapons, and yeah, it feels like um, they feel a lot more well-balanced this time around. This is funny how like that's how like good I've the plasma cutter is. I'm on, yeah. I think, chapter 10 now. I have... Uh, 200,000 credits, 20 nodes spare, uh, 300 plasma energy at least, and loads of health. Like, I'm just... How did you manage that? Uh... <laughs> what am I supposed to say without saying things that sound vain? Um, I, I love mid-maxing Dead Space, and 
it's right. one of my most satisfying things to do in that game and so i love getting so far ahead by choosing everything as best as possible and playing as well as i can that by the time i hit the end i can just unload plasma cutter energy into everything basically don't right. it. and it's, it's good too because i can start up a new game plus which apparently is different they make changes to the campaign um and there's new armors to even get so i wouldn't mind doing that and i'll be able to take all of my nodes and money into that buy up like right. all the weapons and play with them after i've cleared it with just the the only thing is, I don't know if I can do that before we talk about it on the EFAP episode, so we'll do... Mm. Well, I think I'll only have just finished it by then, I would imagine. Mm -hmm. You need to talk to Sitch. He had a rant about how critics need to stop talking about plot and evolve. Where, who, who is he listening to that talks about plot? I feel like nobody does talk about plot. Everyone mm. fucking talks about what the, what the single events in the story mean to whatever side they're on. That seems to be what yeah, everyone's like, doing these days. A lot of the analysis now is not all-encompassing. It's very much, let me pick out the little parts that, like, support my argument while ignoring a great deal of context. Yeah, um, like... Yeah. Remember, um... Think... And this has been a problem forever. I, I have very this specific memory of you and I watching a bunch of Captain Marvel videos, and we were like, nobody is talking about the story. Nobody. Yeah. Nobody wants to do it. So um, I, I reject that he could eat. I don't even know what he ranted about, but I reject the premise that everyone's talking about the plot. I don't know who he's watching. <laughs> I wish people talked yeah. about plot more. Yeah. Uh, he, referenced, hows. he referenced Cinema Sins, but it was still cringe. Cinema Sins doesn't barely talks about plot. Cinema Sins doesn't really talk about plot. He's trying to make jokes. And the if you watch a Cinema Sense film, you don't get a review. You don't get like something that's actually useful to you uh, in terms of making decisions about you know a film's quality or whether you'd want to watch it. Because yeah, they're more concerned with the meme, and sometimes they're just wrong. Like <laughs> they're just totally wrong. Uh. Yiffy torrent on Pinocchio thought we wouldn't notice. Um. Well, to be fair, if I'm able to uh, get you clips of any kind to support uh, the points we're making, I'll try and find them because we'll, it, it better represents the content. Um, or in, in the case of other things, it can better show the flaws. Because obviously I wanted to have the menu ready for um, the show as well, but I couldn't get it in time. And so I just get trailers, which were chewed up as well. Um, and you saw with Dead Space, that was... The footage was... was Oh, pixely. So, you know, I, I like to be able to actually show you guys what we're talking about. Uh, and it's a nightmare as well, because you got to keep on it constantly to make sure you don't hit copyright themes, which is why, you know what, we should have just been a gaming podcast. Oh, completely submit all the copyright problems. Would have certainly been uh, easier, yeah, to avoid that. Luckily, video games just do not have that problem. Thank God we live in that world. Oh, yeah, because it could have been way different. Would you have preferred it the other way or this way? Oh, I prefer it this way. I would prefer that we get like reasonable, you know, like what we do for movie coverage. If we had the whole thing running muted in the background with uh, no cover up, like, is that fair use? Like, ethically, I think you can fight on it, but like, I just don't believe anyone's consuming the film that way or should. It's like, an entirely different bit of content, but I would still want to try and break it up a bit on our end for that. Uh, but you know that I think that they're way too harsh with film copyright, and so I wouldn't yeah, want that are. to be. The but then same again, I guess you got that problem where people are just watching movies. Exactly, on I I want to push help. back at least in part on like the crazy lazy sort of approaches, um, yeah, because that's insane. But you know, when I'm sitting there re-editing a thing for the hundredth time because a clip goes for five seconds or six seconds, just like you're stealing the movie. <sighs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> You once said you might rewatch Godzilla King of the Monsters. Would you be down for a monster vs. arc, except Godzilla vs. Kong? All the problems with that movie could fill a regular EFAB episode, which I'd love to chip in on. I've heard that that movie is absolutely awful. Uh, awful. Awful is what I um, And I kind of, kind of look forward to for us to cover that eventually one day, because it sounds like it'll be perfect. Same for Dominion. That's going to be another perfect one, I'd imagine. Oh, God. Still haven't seen it. The Northman and the exciting. Menu. Two movies from 2022 where Anya Taylor-Joy is basically the only survivor. Go figure. I haven't actually seen The Northman yet. I still need I have not seen it yet either. 
on the list. Hi, Wags. Hello. Uh, Fuck, Mary Kill Trilogy Edition. We got... What are we dealing with here? There's, okay, so these are the, you got the Jurassic Park trilogy, the Mummy trilogy, and the Matrix trilogy. Fuck, Mary Kill. Which in this case, we'll just have to translate into which one do you love the most, the least, and are okay with. Which is funny because... So Probably Jurassic Park probably comes out the the cleanest out of the with those three trilogies. Say the three trilogies one more time. The Mummy, Jurassic, and Matrix. Mummy, Jurassic, Matrix. Because the Mummy three is sinful. Matrix two and three are just just awful. And the thing with Jurassic Park is people debate to this day if two or three are worse. Um, a lot of people say three is worse. If that's the one with the Velociraptor in the dream that says Alan, which, is, but. I feel like the film has more to offer than that, <laughs> you know. Uh, I can tolerate Jurassic uh, Park two and three more than I can The Matrix two and three. Uh, by far. Off of it's been a while since I've seen these, but I would agree with that. I think that there's still things to like. You couldn't. You could watch. Yeah, Jurassic Park two and three. You could watch and enjoy. I think so. Yeah. Um, there's stuff in there, uh, but. The Matrix movies yeah, get the other weird. Ones just feel like wait, yeah. And then as for the Mummy, like I love Adore thoroughly. The first one, second one, I regretfully have to inform people that it's like it doesn't hold up as well as I thought it did. And then the third one is like, the third one inspired the creation of EFAP movies, but it didn't make it. You know, I guess in conclusion, fuck Jurassic, marry the Mummy, and kill the Matrix. I don't even like these results because I like the first Matrix a lot. <laughs> like, I hate this question. It's too complicated. I give up. So yeah, I guess Mary uh, Mary Jurassic Park fuck mummy and kill Matrix. Yeah. I mean you gotta kill Matrix so that we don't get Matrix Resurrections. We have to kill Matrix. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, so Get the name will work. Here. Yeah. Did you wait? Did you mean that to so that the name would make sense, or did? Yes. Okay. That's fair enough. It's really clever of you, Thank Mahler. You. Thank it's you, very man. yeah. This is nice. I You're like that. Uh, at metal, what's your power supply? You might need a stronger one. I think he's solved it now, and he's back on. He's streaming Dead Space right now. Actually. Oh, that's excellent. I'd be curious to poke my head in and see uh, everyone's playthroughs. Uh, give this money to Darkside Mootle. He's got bills. Better buy a new GPU. It's all sorted. And uh, I think he's streaming. Well, he's at the. He's like near the end of the campaign for De Dead Space, but he got like 40 minutes. <laughs> so I don't know if he'll make it. Um, as a former cook, watching Ray Fiennes make that burger brought tears to my eyes. Having worked in service, the commentary works on several levels. Levels. I, I was going to be curious about how accurate all the food stuff was. I assume they would have had like an expert make sure everything was in line. Yeah, my guess would be that it was pretty accurate. Probably worth doing, isn't it? The voice of Wolf is Pablo Escobar from Narcos. That's right, Wagner Mona, I think his name is. I remember someone saying that's his first ever voice acting role, and he fucking killed it. So. He nailed it. Yeah, he, he's uh, he's got an excellent voice. He just felt like everyone. Wagner Mora, that's his name. Yeah, everybody was having a good time. Everybody was working really hard, trying really hard. Yeah. Psst, Mola, play prey. It's some good rat. I will one. I agree. Play prey. Uh, at Rags, I feel this remake takes some of the best ideas from Dead Space 3 and polishes them. The best ideas from Dead Space 3. Uh, like, optional missions for which Dead Space 3 had... I mean, they existed in Dead Space 3. I don't think they weren't... This has more than Dead Space 3 has, to my knowledge. Um, uh, I was going to say, other than the side missions, I feel like every component of this game can be drawn from Dead Space 1 and 2. Yes, um, I'm. I'm trying to think of exactly what it is. I know that in terms of like the the alternative fire modes and stuff, I feel like that was very heavily influenced by Dead Space Two. 
that made a lot of them more viable. Um, right. Dead Space 1, as much as I love the original, you could tell that some of it was like, this is our first attempt at making this game, you know? Yeah, because they um, made a whole bunch of uh, changes by the time you hit Dead Space 2 that are just quality of life. It reminds me of um, uh, God of War 1 to 2 and 2 to 3. There's these changes that are just like, yep, of course they changed that. That annoyed everyone. Which is cool. Uh, yo, been catching up with EFAB. I watched 30 hours this week. Just finished 24. Keep up the good work. Also, high rags. Hello. 30, huh? You got quite an adventure to go. Lots of epic episodes. Thing is, epic Dead Space, selection. Gears, and Bioshock make for excellent settings for stories. However, God of War is what it is. Okay, this says is what it is without Kratos. I think they meant with Kratos, right? Like God of it, War. It isn't what it is without Kratos. Yeah, they said is. So I think you're right. I think they mean yeah, is. I assume um, they mean that, yeah. I'm not even sure I, 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 I agree, right? Because um, if you adapt God of War, it's a, it's a pretty incredible world. You have all the gods to work with. Imagine, like, if you just say the Norse games, for example, you can't have that without Kratos. It's like, well, yes, but if you don't have him, we still have lots of characters that we can make a story with. I just, of, of course, they're going to be making it with Kratos. I imagine the Dead Space one will have Isaac. I imagine Tomb Raider would have Lara Croft. I imagine that Bioshock will have Jack and Andrew Ryan, you know? Um, it's not an impossibility to make it without him, but nobody would recommend it. I like the settings in all of them. I am just hoping for some... Any chance the new Fallout show will be good? I have to check who's right. Guess. I don't know who's right. Well, yeah, I well it's right uh, right. the people who made Westworld. They are oh, the executive no, then. producers. <laughs> Uh-oh, I've heard <laughs> bad things. Westworld was piss. Absolutely fell the fuck apart. I can't believe it got four seasons. It's incredible. Uh. Um, invite X-Ray Girl as well as Mark the Cyborg. Well, we'll have Mark on, of course. Uh, X-Ray Girl is... I don't know if she's suited for, like... Hyper autistic mechanical discussions with <laughs> you. Yeah. Very this is why we'll probably have Theo on, okay? <laughs> like, this, this makes sense. Uh, Y'all haven't seen Coraline or Pan's Labyrinth? What are you doing? I've seen Coraline now. I still haven't seen Pan's Labyrinth, though. Fix that one day. Mm -hmm. Don't use the F word next to the doggo, you wombos. They mean, they that? mean the fix. Yeah, don't say that. All right. Joey King from Wish Upon was in it. She was, yeah. So the main character in Wish Upon is in Bullet Train, and she has a significant oh amount of screen time. Really is she better? odd for. Yes, I would say she's better at. She was, but Wish Upon That's was good. just a nightmare thing for everybody involved. Uh, I feel rags if ever one of us is on our deathbed for whatever reason. We need to record a goodbye to EFAP movies, and it's in the form of the last one should be Wish Upon again. Wish upon one more time. <laughs> well, I and then remember. You just get to close it. Forty three years you get ago. Hit by the car and goes flying, and that is the like, best. Uh, thing. My life it's... is complete, and then you and die. <laughs> you can die that's in peace. peace. <laughs> that's how I want to die. Yeah. Laughing over the wish upon car. <laughs> now I don't know why, but now I'm thinking about in the Simpsons, the Treehouse of Horror, when when Lenny and Carl are dying, and then it's like. Carl, I see heaven. What does it look like? And then it's just a bunch of calls. Yeah. Come on, Lenny. We'll be late for work at the plan. And then he's just like, ah, clock. <laughs> just <laughs> dies with a smile. His idea is heaven. <laughs> they There's did another Poppins, joke. The old guy who died uh, laughing. No, remember the guy what? in the bank? Oh, oh damn. Mary I, I don't remember much about, uh, I don't remember a whole lot about Mary Poppins. It's been a long oh, time okay. since I watched it. Same. Yeah, there was a character in Mary Poppins who died laughing. Neat. Now I'm thinking about uh, in Futurama when Bender, when he became a human and he got really fat and then they had that party <laughs> <laughs> and he died. And then it's like, but Bender just said woo. No, that was fat. Like that was air escaping from the folds of his fat. And then they just push him. Woo! Woo! <laughs> 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 Fun fact, that this is awesome. true with real people. Just go yeah, up to them and them. press in, and yeah, they love it. Well, they, remember, they love now it. I'm thinking about The Simpsons when it was, uh, the doctor was doing a test with Homer in terms of, oh, yeah, no, it was Dr. Hibbert. I thought it was some other doctor, but it was Dr. Hibbert. And he just pokes Homer, 
and then the fat is wobbling, and then he's like, hey, hey, look at it go, and then talk to him, it's like, yes, like, very concerned. Yeah, like, it's like a jiggle <laughs> test, and however long yeah. the jiggling maintains, because it's like a wave and that just goes around the whole thing. And it's body. cool. Yeah. Homer thinks it's, like, awesome that it's yeah. gone well, and talk to him, it's just, oh, God, and another doctor joke, you remember when um Mr. Burns was getting his, like, he was getting tested in terms of his health. There were a lot of there were a lot of good jokes there. There was one where he was just walking up and downstairs. He's like, "I'm a big boy," and then, and then I think it was explained to him that the reason why he's alive is because all of the all of the germs are like trying to get through the door into his immune system all at once, and they're yeah, all like, like all jam. of the diseases on act yeah. at the same time. And then and I think the doctor when he's like trying to push him in, he's like, "Whoa, whoa, whoa." What you're saying is I'm indestructible. And he's like, No, no, no even, even the, the tiniest <laughs> indestructible. indestructible. That was from after season eight. It's why I don't like when people say the Simpsons something went wrong. It was still really funny for years. Yeah. Uh Velma does pole dancing for a dad. I've heard about this. I don't want to watch nice. it. Yeah, I no. believe you 100% that that is a thing that happens. Will you review old movies like How to Train Your Dragon 1 and 2 and other movies? Will we do old movies? I mean, we've yeah. reviewed old movies before, so yeah. definitely. Yeah. Possibility. You know, definitely not an absolute no. It's like, oh, maybe, yeah, we could try and fit that in somehow, somewhere, some way. I can do that. And that is it. We're fully caught up on oh. the... Uh, I guess you call that the the EFAP EFAP one two two three. I think that was so. Not thank you all bunch of stuff. for keeping yeah. us company, for sending in kind messages, and just well, just kind donations. Very nice of you. We shall see you on whatever it is we end up doing next. Yeah, everybody. We will see you later. Thanks for tuning in. Bye. Bye. Bye.